One of Donald Trump's former election lawyers pled guilty and agreed to cooperate with Georgia prosecutors in a major blow to Trump's defense. Meanwhile, another key player in the January 6th coup attempt, Jim Jordan, as of this taping, still lacks the votes to become speaker, leaving the House GOP in chaos and causing a backlash from fellow Republicans and Fox News pundits. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There was a major development today in one of the four criminal cases against Donald Trump. And before we move on, I just have to say, it's still shocking that when discussing a former president, I have to say one of the four criminal cases, and you don't even know which one I'm talking about. It could be the election <laughs> interference case, the stolen documents case, the hush money case, the Georgia case, or because the news is so insane, there could be some other criminal case you totally forgot about, like the investigation into what the hell he's hiding under that bulky jacket. <laughs> Looks like a grandpa trying to sneak a bunch of kids into an R-rated movie. You haven't seen Porky's till you've seen it on the big screen. <laughs> oh, keep it down while I get us some popcorn. <laughs> well, today's breaking news involves the election interference case in Georgia, and specifically one of Trump's former lawyers and co-defendants, Sidney Powell. You might remember her from her mugshot, where she looks like she just realized the kid from The Sixth Sense saw her. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm dead, people. Or you might remember Powell from that infamous press conference she held with Rudy Giuliani shortly after the election, the one where it looked like A1 steak sauce was dripping from his skull. <laughs> Not that we want to imply that anything that comes out of Rudy's head is A1. <laughs> Powell made a bunch of completely unhinged claims like these. What we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election. Do you think when Trump was watching that, he said, oh, f it takes my lawyer a full minute to get a cap off his water. <laughs> Are you seeing this? It's taking him a full, a full minute. The other craziest thing about that clip is the leopard print. I mean, she looks like she's about to raise hell at a Tampa PTA meeting. <laughs> I don't know why we call Rosie Revere an engineer when she's clearly a lesbian. <laughs> Although maybe she knew the cops would come looking for her one day and her plan was to hide on a couch from the 80s. So yes, yeah, Sidney Powell claimed communists in Cuba and China teamed up with a voting software company and a dead Venezuelan dictator to steal the election. What really throws me off, though, is how she says all those crazy things in such a flat tone. It's like if you were on the subway and a guy just turned to you and said, hey man, just want you to know, CIA is reading my brainwaves and using them to guide Russian satellites. Oops, sorry, this is my stop. <laughs> At least Rudy has the decency to scream when he's being a nutball. There's no black America. There's no white America. There is just America. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? Oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. All the networks. It's never good when you turn on the TV and your lawyer is making the oh God why gesture. If the jury uh, says guilty, I'll just throw my hands up in the air. Maybe they'll reconsider. Oh, God, please give me a water bottle that opens easy. <laughs> Why have you forsaken me with these tricky bottle caps? A <laughs> little bit this way, a little bit that way. A little bit this way, a little bit that way. A <laughs> little bit this way, a little bit that way. It's still on. <laughs> But Cindy Powell didn't yell like that. She had that frightening monotone like her voice box was set to sling blade. <laughs> True story, she asked if Trump could pay her in French fried potatoes. <laughs> Powell 
also famously promised to provide tons of evidence of fraud, which she never did, and used one particularly memorable phrase. It's been uh, organized and, and conducted with the help of Silicon Valley people, the, the big tech companies, the social media companies, and even the media companies. And I'm going to release the Kraken. She did. <laughs> She did release the Kraken, but unfortunately, the Kraken was also indicted. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Sidney Powell was saying she had a literal Kraken in her house. I actually would love to see a sitcom about Sidney Powell and a Kraken living together like the odd couple or perfect strangers. They could call it Kraken Up. <laughs> well, today, Powell pled guilty in the case and agreed to testify against any of her co-defendants, which would, of course, include Donald Trump. Sidney Powell, who was one of Donald Trump's fiercest defenders, uh, going back to spinning conspiracy theories after the 2020 election, she's now pleaded guilty to six charges related to election subversion. As part of this plea deal, she has agreed that she will testify in any future trials, which raises the possibility that she could testify against Trump in the future. So in exchange, Sidney Powell agreeing to testify in all future hearings and also hand over documents and evidence related to this case, obviously, given her proximity to Donald Trump, during the, or after the 2020 election, that could be pivotal. That's amazing. She's going to turn over documents and cooperate with the prosecution. Although, how much cooperation can a person that insane really provide? What's she going to tell prosecutors? These are notes from the meeting I had at the White House on January 6th with the president, Rudy Giuliani, the Kraken, two Pegasuses. <laughs> excuse me, two Pegasi. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a crazy person. <laughs> And the ghost of Hugo Chavez. We conspired to steal the election and swore an oath of loyalty by wearing matching leopard print sweaters. <laughs> and while Trump's legal mess gets worse in Georgia, the Republicans' political mess gets worse in D.C., where after more than two weeks, they still can't agree on a speaker. The circus has gotten so humiliating, Republicans are openly <laughs> on each other. We say lots of mean things about Republicans on this show, but I'm not sure I've ever been as mean to Republicans as Republicans are currently mean to themselves. Take, for example, Fox News host Brian Kilmeade, who lashed out at the GOP's embarrassing antics. Ultimately, uh, the Republicans hope to get a speaker, and, and they hope people will forget by November that when they had the majority, they could, not, uh, they could not govern. Behind the scenes, yesterday, it was all about vote for me because let's make a deal. I got a feeling a whole bunch of deals were made yesterday. It is uh, what a carnival of idiots. Uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> First of all, I'm pretty sure Carnival of Idiots was the original title of Fox and Friends. I mean, I don't think I've ever called Republicans a carnival idiots. I mean, I've called them unhinged, oatmeal brain, insurrectionists, no-neck, mutant freak mafia goons who look like they mistook an electric outlet for a glory hole. <laughs> and yet, we do use that Rudy photo a lot. But in fairness, we're using it on our show's merch now. We're putting it on a shirt in the NBC store. <laughs> And yet, even though Republicans are all aiming their fire at each other, they're still also finding time to blame Democrats. Some of them even have the gall to claim that because Democrats did not vote to keep Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy in power, the whole mess is actually the fault of Democrats. An argument so dumb, it led to this contentious back and forth with CNN anchor Brianna Keeler. The Democrats knew what they were doing when they put up 208 votes to take him out of, out of the speakership. And that's what created uh, the current situation that we're in. So then we they had a conference meeting. They, they they didn't take him out of the speakership. I mean, you you guys are sure the majority. They did. But, but, but you guys, but you guys are the majority, right? Ninety six percent of the votes came from Democrats, though, Brianna. I mean, I mean, just factually speaking, there were only eight Republicans, and there were two hundred eight Democrats. I mean, two hundred eight Democrats. But sir, who's voted. in the majority? Uh, well, the Democrats were the majority of that vote, and when we no, have a very who's small in the motion, majority in the House of Representatives? The Republicans are in the majority, but the Democrats provided the majority of the votes to take Kevin McCarthy out of the speakership. In fact, they but provided 96% of the votes. Republicans provided the key votes. They're in the majority. They can provide enough votes, obviously, to put a Republican speaker uh, Brianna, in the place. The Democrats provided 96% of the votes. 208 Democrats voted to remove the Republican Speaker of the House. Eight Republicans voted to remove the Republican Speaker of the House. It's some interesting verbal gymnastics. I will give you that. Um, but I want to talk about the future here. What do you mean gymnastics? Um, I'm just talking about the facts. 208 Democrats voted. There were the vast majority of the vote to take Kevin McCarthy out of the speakership. Well, I'm talking about how it works. First of all, <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, and I'm not going to learn his name. He looks like a stock photo of a Republican politician. Is he in Congress, or is he just the photo that comes in the frame at Macy's? Second. 
watching this interview was like watching a dementia test. Like, what time is it? Well, the clock is round and the arrow is pointing at the numbers. Okay, yeah, but what time is it? That depends on what number the arrow is pointing at. Yeah, but what time is it now? Brianna, at this point, we're just going around in circles like the arrows on that clock thingy. She grilled him so hard it ended with her just checkmating him into silence. I'm not sure what, what I'm missing here with you because 208 Democrats voted with eight Republicans to take the largest Republican fundraiser out of the speakership. Th this was a pretty calculated decision by the Democrats. I get it, it that was, we had it eight was Republicans. A, here's why, sir, because it was a Republican who filed the motion to vacate. It was. It was a Republican that had very, very personal differences with Kevin McCarthy. All right, so Jordan lost 22 Republicans. Man, he just powered down like a Roomba that ran out of batteries. <laughs> I haven't seen someone that deflated since a tree fell on the air dancer at my local car dealership. <laughs> Props to Brianna Keeler for a tough questioning here, but it shouldn't be just her. This is how Republicans should be interviewed on... All the networks! So now, <laughs> the House remains without a speaker, with Jordan failing after two votes and still deciding on whether to hold a third. Some Republicans have been floating a plan to empower temporary speaker Patrick McHenry to run the House. Right now, all McHenry can really do is interim speakers oversee the election of a real speaker and gavel the House in and out of recess. And knowing that's all he can do, he's really going for it with the gavel. We've played this clip a bunch lately. So prepare yourself, because it is very loud. This is the state of the Republican Party. The faraway frontrunner for the presidential nomination is under four indictments, and the House GOP can't even pick a speaker. I don't know if they have a plan for what's next, but if they want to come up with one, they better get... Kraken. <laughs> it's been a closer look. <laughs>